heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, I'm Lady Cheryl. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you an observation of my food forest after some heavy raining. I'm going to share with you how I treat aphids. And also, I'm going to share with you an update on some of the food in my emergency garden. Okay, let's get started. Hello, gardeners. It's early Saturday morning. It's raining. And I want you to look at this. Um, let me uh, go in closer. Aphids. They love the young tender leaves. The indication that you have them is look at your young trees, leaves, look for ants. You see those ants moving around? They farm the aphids because they like the honeydew excretion they produce. It's a sweet, sticky uh, liquid. Wow, it's a lot of them there. And uh, they will farm them, meaning that they'll stick by them, even try to protect them if they can. See all those ants? They try to protect them. It's all on this little young tree. It's a young apple tree. And you can see an apple or two right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my water hose I turned on, and I'm going to just blast it off. So I'm taking my water hose. And I'm just blasting these little ugly suckers because you don't want them to suck the life out of this young tree. And always look for the new young leaves. The tenderonies, as the court men will say. These are tenderonies. They, those aphids feel the same way about tender leaves on the fruit trees. Another thing is you need to do is try not to let your trees touch because they'll just hop from one tree to the next one. So this is why I moved my trees this morning. These two because they've grown a lot. That's why I like to grow trees in containers is because I can move them when I need to. So all these lighter colored uh, leaves that are, you know, light green, those are the ones you want to look at first, because that's where the aphids will attack. I'm going to put the phone down so I can finish blasting this all off. And you remember before, okay, here's one I missed. I will come back and get that one. A few more here. Uh, and sometimes they'll be embedded in the leaves so deeply that it's hard to blast them off. Got most of these off. I see a little bit more. Let me go in closer. So you can see, see that? So I'm gonna keep on blasting until I get rid of most of them. Yeah, it's not too bad. Even these little young, small, tender ones here, you have to check them. And I see a few from here. Guess I should have my glasses on. Let's look over behind that one. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting ready to start blasting again. Okay, so let's check again after another douse of wa uh, water. Couldn't get this one. I hope I'm, I hope by smearing it a little bit. Couldn't get all the aphids off. And they'll usually just drown. Okay, I did better over there. Just a little bit on here, right here. And there was a lot right over here. I think I got it all. I spent most of my time blasting. And they'll be on the back of the leaves. They're real smart. 
little nasty creatures. They are smart. They won't be on the top of the leaves. The ants may be crawling around on top, but here's some more. They'll catch to the back of the leaves. And you'll know when your leaves start curling. See that how that leaf is curling there? Here, here. They are so smart, they'll move on to another leaf. And make you a mouse one, that's okay. So, uh, I'm gonna give it a break for now and let them regroup while I check all the other trees and then I'll blast them again. Now, if you look over here, you'll see some curling of the leaves right here. And this uh, young tender, young tender leaves. But I think I got them all off. And over here, I think I blasted them all off pretty good. But where they're heavily concentrated, it gets a little bit more difficult to bl blast them off. I got all of these pretty good. So, yeah, in between the rain, I'm just going to keep going around the food forest, blasting aphids wherever I see a, uh, or an infestation. Real quickly, I just want to show you how big my pears are getting. This is the kefir pear, the one that had a, uh, had a fire blight uh, a few years ago when I topped it off straight across right here. And you can see where it produced more branches. And then I'm gonna show you over here because I think this is just magnificent. My grapes. I am so, so happy. I'm hoping to make, wow. <laughs> it's such a wonderful feeling when you take a stick, put it in the ground. And then two years later, you see this. It's such a wonderful, glorious feeling. What a feeling. <clears throat> Just keep believing <clears throat> that your fruit will grow and grow and grow and grow. What a feeling. <laughs> Last year, I only had a few, and I bagged them up with organza bags. I'm not going to do that this year. I'm going to share with the birds. There you go. Just gorgeous. Just, just loaded with grapes. From three small vines. One here, right down there at the bottom. One here. And where's the other one? Oh right here let me move this out the way and let you see that right down there so one two three since i'm here and i won't be doing tuesday's fruit because i'm going live on my canning procedures i want you to see the muscadines they're trying to hide they won't be ready until august but they're they are loaded too they're just much smaller and more difficult to capture. There we go. Okay. One more thing. I know I keep saying that. Look at those elderberries for the first time and the tree is not two years old. And it's actually not a tree, even though it grows up like one, it's a bush. Okay. The tree is doing very good. There's a nice amount of apples. Very proud of that. And I may have to thin some out here because as you can see, this uh, branch is leaning. And I think lightning may have struck this branch right here. So I'll prune it off. I'll wait until it stops raining. And then I may have to just go ahead on and, and prune it off because we're gonna have rain until the end of the month. Drat. Rain until the end of the month. A lot of my Fuyu persimmons are dropping off. I'm not tripping. Because I still have a lot. Because I know that the tree will drop what it can't handle. See? That's what it looks like when it drops. It just drops down to the ground. Oh, goodness. My pomegranate tree. I think I got a broke limb. I don't know, guys. Okay, let me step back and show you. 
See, this doesn't lean down like that. See that space missing right there? That's where that tree is. I think I may have to prop this up because it is loaded with fruit. I will insert a picture and show you what the fruit looks like. So this is what the fruit looks like. It's a uh, small because the tree is young and I understand that it, the fruit will get bigger and bigger every year. The flesh uh, is pink and super sweet. My grand angels love it. But uh, I'm concerned about this. I got to get up in here and inspect this to see if this branch is just bent. Let me get in here. It's just heavy because of all the rain. So I will uh, zip tie it together with something. Okay. I'll try to remember to come back out here and videotape it when I uh, zip tie it. Wow. That scared me for a minute. That's some beautiful, delicious fruit. Tomatoes in totes or containers are doing better than the ones in the ground or in raised garden beds, I should say, because they can drain uh, quicker. So there's not a lot of yellowing. I see just a tiny bit here. That's not an issue. Take it off. But it still has a lot of tomatoes. So yeah, I might have to go back to uh, plenty more tomatoes in containers because this year has been a trip as far as the rain is concerned. I looked at the forecast today uh, from the National Weather Service and rain is in the forecast until the end of May. So I'm praying that we'll get some relief during those days so that, uh, wow, so my plants can dry out. Everything under the gazebo is doing good. It's just getting a little residual rain and when the wind pushes it in. Okay, I'm going to the greenhouse. I uh, moved this uh, bucket here, this uh, 55 gallon drum, because all of my rain uh, containers are uh, full. So I don't want to lose any valuable rainwater because after this rainy period is over, then in North Texas, we go into our drought period. And I couldn't get the top off of this drum. So I put this here to catch the water and here and here and here. And then I'm just dipping it up and pouring it in here until one of my sons can come over and open this one. All is well in the greenhouse. Those are some tomatoes that I picked uh, yesterday when I was uh, relieving the plants at from as many branches that I could so that I can get these tomatoes, which is quite a lot, uh, so I can get them to uh, ripen. And you can see here, I can take these. They're nice and ripe. This one can ripen a little bit more, but these two, they're nice and soft. So I'll take these in and have them for lunch. And I might as well get those other ones too, because if you're new to gardening, you may not know that tomatoes are one of the fruits that will continue to ripen off the vine and will not lose its sweetness. So we still have a lot of tomatoes and you can see here the onions that I scattered everywhere. I planted uh, Blue Hubbard squash uh, in the areas where I know that uh, when I pull these tomatoes up, like for example, when I pull this one up, it won't touch where the squash is uh, transplanted. And here I mounded up eight squash here that I will separate them and when I need to. And I only have four right here and I will add more potting soil. I have to go to Home Depot to pick up my delivery. And what I like about the Home Depot in my area is uh, you can order it over the internet and then you just drive up to the tent and they will have people from customer service there. You give them your order number, they load it up in your car trunk or, or uh, truck and that's it. And then you just go. You don't even have to sign because three people sign off uh, that you receive the order. So you have no contact. Uh, you know, with the pandemic going on, you don't have to worry about anything. So this is the corn. It's going coming up really good. Oh, I forgot to show you the corn 
um, at the back of the fence. I'll walk back there before it starts raining again and show you that it's coming up. And um, okay, guys, check this out. This is a slug. This is why you come out and examine your property after it rains. Slugs will drown in too much water. Even though they are attracted to moist places, they will drown if they get too much water, so they'll start coming to the surface. So this will be relocated to a nice home. Wink, wink, a flush down the toilet after I squeeze it. <laughs> uh, you couldn't pay me to pick a worm up when I was young. I had four older brothers and one baby brother and they used to chase my sister and I all around the house, the neighborhood with worms, mice, anything that they could find that would gross us out. I'm still afraid of mice. And in another video, I'll show you how I deterred them from coming to my yard. I haven't seen one in years. Okay, so now I'm gonna head back to the back of the fence and show you the rest of the corn. But let me back up and let you see all of this and I need to get that off of there. So this corn will be transplanted and I'll take you along when I do. Before I head to the back of the fence, I just want to show you some of the corn that came up in this, this uh, grow box that I planted in just a day or so make a big difference. This is onion scraps. So you can see some here and then there's one right there. And then of course, the rest of the peaches and cream sweet corn I plant to the seeds or sow the seeds right here should be one coming up around here pretty soon okay let's head to the back of the fence now this will not stay in these boxes uh i'll probably put a few plants of squash here so that it can trindle down and just you know hang down to the ground but uh let's go back to the back fence and i'll show you the rest of the corn and yeah uh, make sure you the beans over there. They're doing just like I thought. They trellis from the bottom of that bed right there. See at the bottom? And then they're going up. And now they're trellising over. And then I'll weave them in and out of that trellis. We ain't had a field day with my corn package. But right behind this uh, pecan tree is where I planted some corn. And it's coming up slowly, but it's coming up. I hope it makes it in the ground. I hope it doesn't get root rot. Look like I've lost, lost one already about right there. But uh, after the rain has passed, I'll put some more corn here. Okay. Some white beets, and I sowed some more seeds in this container yesterday. Harvested all the uh, lettuce, butter country lettuce that was here and gave it to a nice young lady who's 70 something years old and for my new gardeners if you see something like this these little mushrooms that come up in your soil don't worry about it it means you've got a lot of rain or a lot of moisture content and it just means you have healthy soil it'll dry up when the weather dries up okay also i want to show you that i pruned my uh soursop apples brought them under the gazebo to get more shade and they're putting on nice new growth and I think they found a happy home right here where they get some filter sun in the morning and then shade in the afternoon. I'm gonna let you guys go. I want to give you an update on my plant that I named after my Aunt Lois. I went to her funeral after uh, shortly after Thanksgiving last year. She was my mother's last surviving sibling very dear to me because she looked just like my mother, sounded like my mother, and they were so close. And so I gathered some seeds uh, of her uh, cold hardy uh, hibiscus in her yard. And this, because it was cold there and the seeds were already stratified, I planted them in January when I started my seeds and it's doing well. It will come out of this pot eventually and go into the ground because my aunt's bush was over eight six to eight feet tall she would trim it and she was an avid gardener in her 90s guys beautiful lady i'll always love her and remember her and i know my memories of her will be in my heart and when i look at this plant i get a little sad but it's okay because i know she is in a better place and she's not suffering so right now it's in that pot there but uh it's going to be moved in the uh, fall. This concludes this video. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch it.
If you like this video, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel. God loves you and I love you too. Thank you for watching. Bye now.